You unlock this door with the key of your imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance. Of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into... You're not my father. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of You're Not My Father. Even though this is not an October podcast, why not? It's always fun to do scary things. <laughs> yeah, the laugh doesn't really convince me either. But that's okay. We're working on it. Uh, today's episode is about what's going on and what's coming up in the month of October. So, fun things going on here at the castle. At the castle with Igor. <laughs> yeah, the laugh's getting bothersome. Yeah, we've uh, we've been doing quite a bit here recently. Um, Conan's back in drum lessons. My daughter is doing guitar now, which is a bit weird. But I guess that's okay. Um, it's not like I don't play guitar and there's not guitar stuff laying around. So oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, but one of the things I, I came to realization here recently in the past few days was that there is a musical instrument in just about every room in the house, except for the bathrooms. I'd be gross. Um, <laughs> I was going to say. Unless you count the original trumpet instrument. Anyway, part in the bathtub. Uh, no, uh, there is an instrument just about in every room, I would say. Um, in my office, yes. Um, the kids' bedrooms, yes. My bedroom, yes. The living room, yes. The big room. Yes. The kitchen. The kitchen's kind of in the in the living room, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there may not be anything in the garage, I guess. I don't know. But uh, music seems to kind of permeate the, uh, the coffin that I lie in. <laughs> oh, man. I was, I was hoping for a Dave Mustaine Megadeth type of voice there, but, um. No, nah, that didn't work. Um, uh, the uh, the music part is is really very interesting. So, um, kind of some interesting. How many times are going to say the word interesting? Shut up. <laughs> um, my dad was was a big time um, jazz player when he was in high school, I guess, um, and it kind of translated to the military for a little while. Um, but that's a different story. And um, when I was growing up, I was reading through his uh, yearbook, and they called him Jazzbo. I was like, what the? What kind of name is that? And I didn't know why. So I asked him one time, and he was like, yeah, yeah, I was in jazz band, and I played a lot of jazz, and yeah, I played a lot of the horned instruments and stuff like that. And um that was a kind of a big thing. And I was like, wow. And, you know, dad was kind of always into music. Um, dad was kind of weird, though. You know, once he was, 
he had done something and he was done with it. He was done with it. He didn't waste another minute on doing anything else with it. Um, it was kind of odd. But um, Sophia's in jazz band now, so she's she's playing a lot of jazz. I don't do that. Um, much more in the metal blues arena. Um, and Conan, Conan's all over the place, drum sets and whatnot. But um, Dad did try to get me to, to play trumpet, and I, I did for a while. I thought I was pretty good at it. Um, but I somehow or another was cleaning my valves on my trumpet, and I, I think I kind of stuck it in somehow the wrong way and it didn't work and I was really afraid of what my dad would say so I kind of hid it under my bed and didn't really do much after that and that was that and that was kind of sad because even to this day I still kind of have dreams about playing the trumpet and I really kind of would like to start again maybe but um now that kind of kiboshed my my trumpet dreams, but um, I was always kind of musical. Whenever I was a kid, anytime there was a piano, I'd I'd bang away on it. And there were several times that people would come up to my parents and say, "You know, he's really got a gift for music." And um, I started saving up to to buy a piano, and I think it was about like a hundred bucks at that point in the eighties, and. Um, we end up getting this slightly out of tune, upright piano. Um, it was old. <laughs> I mean, really old. It almost kind of had that, you know, old Western kind of vibe to it. Um, it was really interesting. All right, go again. Saying the word interesting. Damn it. Um, but uh, I, I tried to teach myself piano, and it just didn't really work. I... I tried composing my own stuff but as a kid you you really need some direction um and I'm, I'm very happy that my daughter is getting direction and my son's getting musical direction and it kind of spills all over the place and um yeah so sophia's got um she's got an acoustic guitar and now i got her an electric guitar and i got her one of those little spark amps which so far, um, I heard a lot of good things about it, but eh, personally, I'm, I'm not too impressed with it, but I haven't really gone down the rabbit hole with it. But I think for kids, it's probably probably right there. You know, that's exactly what they need. Um, but music, music tames the, uh, the savage beast, the beast. <laughs> oh man. Is this joke getting old yet? Yeah, it is. It's not October yet. It's not Halloween. It's just not, uh, it's just not going on right now. Um, but no, um, music is, is kind of a big thing. My wife is into playing piano, although she doesn't really do it. Not so much. Um, yeah. So music. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Grab a sip of the potion, hit the three wheel motion. As the great warrior poet Ice Cube said way back when. And why am I saying that now? Well, it's interesting. Man, I said it again. That's okay. If you know how many times I've said that word <laughs> during this podcast, feel free to slap me that many times. No. The potion. So if you listened to last uh, episode where I talked about being on keto, I have learned out an important thing that I should uh, definitely be doing. And that is electrolytes. Brondo. It's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes in it. Now, apparently, um, I sure hope I didn't say this in the last podcast. I think this is something new I recently found out. Um, the whole electrolyte thing. Um, so sports drinks typically have electrolytes in them. Um, you think Gatorade, Powerade, AIDS, 
no, not that, not that kind of hits. No, 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 no. Um, but yeah, electrolytes, you, you, you're sweating, you're, you're doing all these things. So on keto, I am not sweating and, you know, playing ball and, you know, being the ultimate athlete, not by any means, not at all, but apparently not having all the carbs and not eating, um, a lot of the carb, I just said carbs, breads and other sweet things or whatever. You're not getting a lot of the, uh, sodium, potassium and, and other things that you would typically get. Um, so one of the things that I've been advised on is to have, um, electrolytes to drink that. So I've been drinking this, um, I think it's L Y F T lift or maybe I'm making that up. It's definitely starts with an L it's four word, four letters. Um, it's a drink. Um, it's really interesting. So the first time I had it, I was like, that's a bit salty. And of course it says stuff about saltiness and whatever, but salty, but an interesting flavor. So I got this like lemon lime thing or whatever. And I put a couple of squirts of, of lemon juice in there because I typically will, if I'm drinking any kind of water or something like that, I usually put a few drops of lemon juice or lime juice in there um, because I like that kind of flavor. And so I did that in the first couple of sips. I was like, ah, salty, interesting, neat, you know, that type of deal. And then after about a few minutes go by, I'm, I'm drinking on this. I'm quaffing this beverage in my chalice, in my castle, in the dungeon with the demons. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm drinking this and I'm like, this tastes like Gatorade back in the day. Um, in the eighties, like early eighties, mid eighties, somewhere around there before Gatorade changed its formula, apparently, um, back when it was in the glass bottles. Um, once it, the logos changed and all this other stuff, I, I think it, it, they changed the, the ratio. I think you had to drink more to get the same amount of electrolytes or whatever, and kind of turned it into more of a, uh, Here's the drink that people are going to drink up there with Coke or, or whatever. So this tastes like the original Gatorade, which I loved. Um, I kind of like that kind of salty drink flavor. Um, in reality, it's almost like a really good kind of mixer for margaritas. <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing, um, I think you'd really kind of be into it. Um, so yeah, I, I've been doing that. Um, some of the other mistakes, other mistakes, this was a mistake. This was great. Um, the mistakes I've been making on keto, um, I was eating a lot of fruit, not a lot of fruit, but moderate amount of fruit, a lot of sugar. Okay. Well, that's going to come back to, to haunt me from a, a ketosis standpoint. So my beloved pineapple and peaches and other things are going away, um, which is really sad. Um, apparently you can have berries because berries are somewhat lower in those types of sugars. Um, but the pineapple and the peaches, um, yeah, that's kind of sad. Um, also my yogurt, um, some of the yogurts I've had, oh man, they tasted good. They, it was Yoplait. It was light. It was, yeah, there's a reason why it tastes good. <laughs> and it's something that I can't have. Um, so the Greek yogurt is way tangy, you know, it's like, oh, um, there's really not a whole lot of sweet to it. Um, so ran into those problems. Also carbs. Um, I felt like 40 to 45 grams of carbs were more or less like, okay, if I hit that, I'm probably okay. But anything more than that, no. Because it was like, oh, this is a small number. This is like 2 to 5% of your daily allowance for, for carbs. I was like, surely if I, if I have that much, you're okay. Well, 45, 50 is like the speed limit on carbs for the entire day, not just for one meal or, or whatever. So that's a problem. Um, 
So some of the things that I was eating did tend to have a little bit more carbs. So this week, this weekend, um, I, I did a bit more research. Um, I got one of those ketosis test strips. And let me tell you something. <laughs> If you don't know what a ketosis test strip is, is basically you urinate onto this test strip and you match the color to the color on the bottle and that'll tell you the relative level of ketones in in your urine and that'll translate into how much are probably circulating in your body. Well, I didn't know some things about that, but I went ahead and got it anyway. And so the first day, <laughs> this is horrible. So I'm like, I really have to use the bathroom really bad. And I'm looking over while I'm peeing and I'm like, oh, this, there's that thing. I was like, hmm. And I'm like reading and peeing at the same time. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. I'm just going to not flush. Is that how people would do it? And I didn't read all the instructions, but I did read them. Like you've got 15 seconds once urine hits that test strip to compare it to the bottle exactly 15 seconds. And after that, the, the results are skewed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I dip it into the unflushed toilet. You may not want to hear that. And I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm counting off the 15 seconds and I'm looking at the bottle and it's like slight elevated. Yeah. I'm like, like it registers that there's ketones there, but um, you know, very basic. I was like, hmm, okay. Well, maybe because it was a little watered down in the toilet, um, tomorrow morning I will be prepared. And so I did. I got up and I'm like, okay, I've got 15 seconds. I've, I'm, I'm looking at the toilet bowl. I'm looking at the strip, toilet bowl, strip, strip, toilet bowl. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I hope I don't make a mess. <laughs> so I'm peeing and I'm like, okay. You're going to hit it. Yes. Did it? Yes. Okay, great. I'm like counting off 15 seconds. I'm like, okay, I am peeing for more than 15 seconds. And I'm like, okay, so I'm kind of making some adjustments. I'm I'm trying to manage this and it's about the same thing. I'm like, okay, well, geez. I'm like, I clearly have a, a skill. I have a particular skill. <laughs> when it comes to ketosis strips. Um, and so I watched some more videos, did some more research, and um, those strips are not necessarily made for people that are doing this diet. Some of it's for diabetes. Um, but these strips are, are not good for, for the diet because, um, well, two things. It's good at the beginning of the diet, but it's not good once you've been on it for a while. And why is it not good while you since you've been on it for a while and the answer is is your body is producing ketones but it's also using them um it's using them at an elevated rate so you're not going to get a very accurate measuring of that um what you would get on this diet is in the beginning you would you'd see you know hey bigger number better yes um that's where it would be, but not, 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 not in this case. Um, so yeah, so I was like, oh, bummer. Um, and I should have done more research and I, I don't know. There's a lot to this diet. Um, and I could tell you more, but you know, read it yourself. <laughs> I am not a medical doctor. Don't follow my medical advice unless you talk to a doctor and then that's their advice then, isn't it? Um, so no, don't follow my medical advice. But from a follow you perspective, um, I do have some really great news. It kind of warms my heart. Um, my son is really taking to church like a duck to water. Um, I, it, it, it gladdens my heart in so many different ways. Um, I, I feel like, like he's becoming more the man that I wanted to be. Um, and it's great. 
It really is. And I really do love him a lot. Even though he makes me so mad sometimes. <laughs> Just like any great relationship, somebody's got to make you really mad. Um, and you've still got to love him for it. Um, and he does. He makes me mad, but I love him so, so incredibly much. It's, it's crazy. And my daughter, I... She's kind of like halfway on the fence. But you know what? I'll take that. She's she's getting closer, I think, to kind of popping out of her shell and, and being, being in love with God. I think it's going to happen at some point. And speaking of some point, um, remember when I said that the show was not going to be religious and whatnot? Um Here's my notice. That's going to go away. I'm going to be religious on this show. That's just part of my evolution. Um, I thought for a moment that I was like, you know what? I could create a different show and talk about that other stuff. But realistically, there's only so much time that I have um, in this world and on this podcast. And I don't know if I've got two podcasts in me, um, or I feel, or killing this podcast and moving on to another one. Um, so yeah, this podcast is going to be a bit on the religious side. I'm not going to say that I'm a Bible thumper. I'm going to thump a Bible at you. I'm going to throw one at you and tell you I'm full of Christ's love and bam. <laughs> that was in a movie, by the way. It was called Saved. <laughs> Funny movie, by the way. Um, not, not, not PG. Not by any means. Um, but no, this is this is my notice. Um, yeah, it's gonna be. It'll be a little bit more religious. I'm not gonna dance around it. Um, but neither am I. Just to clarify, um, I'm not gonna put somebody down for not believing in God. I'm not going to put you down if you believe in a different version of God um, or multiple gods. Um, the only thing I can tell you is, is that I love you. You're my constant listener, my true believers, and we're walking this path together. And maybe we end up in the same clearing at the end of the path. And maybe we don't. Um, but... Here we are. Here we are, walking this together. Um, I'm not going to judge you. That's not my job. It's not my position. All I can do is help. And I like that. And that's what I'm doing. I hope. I hope. I hope I'm helping. Um, in the true spirit of being Christian, uh, <laughs> we are going to celebrate Halloween next year. Oh, yes, you may not do this, but um, in my family, we typically don't do that. My wife is, at the best, a um, she'll trip you on your way to Halloween. But at this point in time, she's become much more lax about it. Before she would fight me <laughs> about eating Halloween, I just gave up. But now, since I'm the uh, spiritual head of the family, I'm giving it my okay, my blessing. Because realistically, realistically, to me, Halloween, in its current state and form, in which kids have fun with it, um, it's not a religious thing. It's just a time to be, have fun. You know, you can dress up like Iron Man, Tony Stark. Wolverine, Thor, Batman, Superman, um, Wonder Woman, um, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, R2-D2, C-3PO, pick your poison, pick somebody that is fun and exciting that you could put a costume on and pretend to be who, who you want to be, um, kind of like a comic con or, um, cosplay or, or whatever, you could do that. It'd be your night. 
community day. You could run around and people are like, okay, it's Halloween. I get that. No problem. You could, you could wear that to work theoretically. Um, it could be really cool. Um, so yeah, we've, we've traditionally have not really done that. And in the past few years, we did something called trick or treat in the heat, which it was not during October. <laughs> um, cause October is pretty cold for us more, more or less, you know, October 31st, right before November, you do the math, cold, snowy, icy, maybe, maybe. And, um, we kind of got there by baby steps in the past few years. I really kind of thought I was like, you know, I really want my kids to, to be able to do this. And she actually took them trick or treating. I think it was the year before last with some friends. And I was surprised. But of course, like this beautiful, wonderful thing that had hatched in our relationship. And I was like, I'm not going to say anything about that. <laughs> you enjoy it however you want to. If I said something, maybe you'd be like, oh, we need to put the brakes on. I was just like, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, really, really cool. And so last year we, we gave out candy and um, that was kind of neat. It was kind of Halloween light. But um, I think this year... Um, if my schedule accommodates it, I'm, I'm actually here. Um, I want to dress up this year. I don't know what it would be, but I think it needs to be pretty cool. Um, like, yeah, maybe a little more Halloween stuff around the house. Um, <laughs> so my daughter got a skeleton at Target the other day. Like a little hanging skeleton that you hang on your door. Not one of the big ones, but the kind of small ones. So she called him, she named him Frederick. <laughs> and she takes him to school. And I kid you not, she, um, it was picture day. And so she asked if she could get the, let the skeleton have his own school picture. And so the people were like, sure, you can do that. They took pictures of him. And um, apparently we can pay for Frederick's school picture, um, which I think is a riot. And I was, I just applauded her. I was like, baby, that's, that's awesome. Um, and then she kept him in his locker, in her locker. And I guess some overbearing school administrator decided that that was too much of a distraction. Apparently she even took him to lunch with her, um, which they're not studying during lunch anyway. He was confiscated and given back at the end of the day um, and said he couldn't come back to school. So what did she do today? Well, she went to Target. She texted me. She's like, <laughs> let me just read this. I'm not exactly sure exactly how this happened. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay. She says, can you lend me $10? I'm like, lend? I'm like, okay. And then I see this picture of all these skeletons laying on a shelf for a big skeleton. And I was like, sure, why not? So thank you, three heart um, emojis, and then this big skeleton. And I didn't realize how big the skeleton was, but he's basically... I don't know, human size ish, sort of, um, maybe a little on the stunted side of human, but, um, fairly large. <laughs> and she's trying to decide what to name him. I'm like, Rupert. <laughs> she's like, what? I was like, you need to watch this scene from dirty, rotten scoundrels. And if you know the one that I'm talking about, then great. You and I are more or less on a really similar wavelength. Um, but the scene is the, uh, may I use the bathroom scene? Um, and so dirty rotten scoundrels is these two con artists played by Michael Caine and Steve Martin. And, um, Steve Martin is the very special young man named Rupert. <laughs> anyway, go to YouTube, 
Trust me, it'll make for a great laugh. Um, but anyway, skeletons. Oh my. Um, yeah, I don't know what I should make Conan dressed up like. Um, I think it'd be cool to make him look like a vampire or, you know, one of the classics. Um, I think it'd be cool to make Sophia look like a witch. Maybe I could be the fat vampire. <laughs> like a successful vampire. A fat vampire would be a successful one, wouldn't it? Don't you think? I mean, if he's fat, he's probably a really great vampire. He gets he gets everything he wants when it comes down to, you know, <laughs> blood. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, um, thus far in Anchorage, it's been a very um, cool September. Um, more or less um, highs in the mid-50s, lows in the mid-40s, scattered showers. Tonight's forecast, dark, with scattered darkness. Continued darkness to the morning where scattered sunshine will prevail um, in various different places. Um, yeah, so we are on the downward slope for cold weather. And of course, some days it may climb up and down, but thus far, it seems like we're going to have a potentially cold winter. Um, somebody did mention to me that they think that we're going to have more snow this year than we did last year. And last year we had record amounts of snow. <laughs> My answer to record amounts of snow is no, 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 no. <laughs> oh man. If Morgan Freeman was here, he would say no too. That doesn't sound like Morgan Freeman. Believe it or not, I can actually do a really good Morgan Freeman. Um, <laughs> oh, man, am I going to do this? Um, one of my favorite movies of his is um, Lean On Me, where he's uh, he's the principal. Um, they call me Crazy Joe. Now they call me Batman. <laughs> well, I've got that voice down pretty well. Um <laughs> But one of my one of my favorite scenes is where he's got the the little guy up on the on the roof of the school and apparently he's been smoking crack. And <laughs> anyway, um his his name's Sam's and uh <laughs> I guess he wants back in school and he's like <laughs> he's just telling him like, Oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this. What's been going through all your mind all this time, son? You smoke crack, don't you? Look at me, boy. Don't you smoke crack? It kills your brain cells, son. It kills your brain cells. When you do it, you're killing your brain cells. You're doing the same thing as killing yourself, except you're doing it slower. Now, I suggest if you're going to kill yourself, don't F around with it. Go on and do it expeditiously. Now, go on and jump. <laughs> anyway, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Great actor. Great, great actor. Um, and that was a great movie, by the way. Um, something that everybody should should watch, especially if you've been to a rough school where um, things haven't really gone your way. Just believe it, that it could be way, way worse. Um, definitely, no doubt. Do it expeditiously. <laughs> Oh man. Um what else is going on? Um I don't know. I've 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 been improving I'm trying to improve my sound. I, I think I've done some uh what have I done here? I have done some uh room treatment. Um and if you look up room treatment on TikTok, that's something about back massages and other nefarious things. Um room treatment for sound. Um so one of the things that uh, studios and podcasts or whatever, typically, um, if they don't have a bunch of high-end special effects and a bunch of editors, which 
that's not me. You have these room treatments, and, and that's kind of the industry standard. You have these um, sound dampeners, deadeners, acoustical traps, um, bass traps, and stuff like that. So I got some more of these panels that are supposed to help keep the the sound down and the echo down and um, some other things that just were kind of interesting to try. And so far, so far, it sounds like that they've kind of worked um, fairly well. So we'll see. Um, hopefully you've noticed an improvement here. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, but I like to hope so. Yeah. So for, so for, so for, what does that mean? So for, it's like give them one four. It's like give them one four what? One four? Are you giving them 14? One and then four? Give them one four for, for what? I don't know. <laughs> By God, give them one four. <laughs> By God, give him one, two. <laughs> one, two, buckle my shoe. Yeah, now I've gone off the deep end. It's getting late. I still have some laundry to do. Get up in the morning, go back to work, drop off kids, do it all again. Da 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 da. -da. I still have my fake new Gatorade that needs to be drunk, some electrolytes. Um,. Yeah, so anyway, I have a feeling that we'll do a proper October Halloween episode here coming soon, but since I really like October and Halloween, maybe we'll just do a few. I don't know. So from Alaska Vania, this is your host, Thomas Green Man. In the cold. Ah, ah, ah. I am the count. I count one, two, three, four. What comes after four? I don't know. It's five, maybe six, seven, eight. Um, yeah. <laughs> Adios, muchachos, amigas, niños, niñas. Vaya con Dios. Enjoy. still here. Aren't you supposed to be listening to the background music? <laughs>